you right now in the name of Jesus for your word. I thank you, God, for the brand design, God. I thank you for showing up uh, and showing out in our lives, God. I thank you for the secret place uh, of the Most High. Thank you for allowing me to dwell in that secret place. He said, if I dwell in the secret place uh, of the Most High, I shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Then David said, I will say, the Lord, he is my refuge. My fortress, my God in Him will I trust surely. He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Hallelujah. I don't know why I just memorized the first three verses, but that's just um, that's where my mind works. Yes, God, keep me in a secret place uh, and not the secret space. Uh, we talked about it a while back uh, when uh, that, that thing became popular. That thing became popular. Hallelujah. Mama. This is the same space. Uh, we don't make a, uh, even in the body of Christ, we make every uh, space uh, a safe space. No, uh, I don't want to be in a safe space uh, because a safe space will keep me the same uh, way that I am. I don't want to be in an unsafe space. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, 232 North for Tomac Street. Uh, I already am. Hallelujah. God. Uh, I'm in the secret place. Uh, why? Because I'm not in a secret uh, or safe space. Uh, uh, safe space. Uh, bring safe space cadets. Uh, Nick Hill of the glory uh, with their mind in the, uh, in the stars and in the astronomical planes. Uh, they can't get the Bible. For the Bible says, uh, Hallelujah. Uh, blessed is the man that walked not in the council of the ungodly, nor said in the way of sinners. Uh, blessed is the seed of school for her. Uh, this is where I'm going. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Those that are lawless, they don't want to hear that. But I'm not talking about how his delight is in the law of the Lord. And then here's the law. And then here's the law. And then here's the law. That person that meditates day and night. I found myself day and night. I was sleeping on the floor last night. Day and night. That chick ran me out of my bed. Day and night. Keeps me up. Day and night. But thank you God. Hallelujah. I found out that, that that person got purpose. They got purposes. They got the opposite. You don't, don't think that there's not a word of Satan, of, of a Bible thing. They got the Romans 8, 28 of the demonic Bible. Don't think she don't got no purpose. He said the only thing that's sitting between her and good purpose is her choice. He said the only thing sitting between me and bad purpose and Satanic purpose is that I chosen to follow God. Because the Bible says, choose thee this day whom you will serve. Will it be God? Or will it be man? I chose when I was six, and so I have not fallen off that path. Stayed on the way. Don't think to me and me going astray and me landing up in dismay. Don't think to me and me not walking the way. I was intended to walk. It's my choice. Hallelujah. Stay with me. Don't leave me. Because he's an ox. Hallelujah, God. I said, wait, Lizzie is ox, Lizzie is ox, Lizzie is ox. And I said, wait a minute, because he's ox. Ooh, why can't I be, if I get all good in the mood, why can't I be an ox, Jesus? Why can't I be an ox? Stay with me, I'll tell you why I said that. Hallelujah. And so thank you, God, my returning. Hallelujah, my eyes. Away from the situation to see what you are trying to teach me. Thank you, God. If I got to get a doggy bed to sleep on. Hallelujah. I saw one. It's got it's good for anxiety. It's got plush things. And I put it right on the floor. Nobody will hear me when I'm walking. That's very important that nobody hears me when I'm walking at night. Hallelujah. Because it's dangerous. There's dangerous minds that are alert around here. Dangerous minds find things that they shouldn't be finding under the door. I'm not under the front door, but under the back door, because the front door is connected with cameras. Blah, blah. But they went down and walked the steps in the snow and slid something dry under a snowy step. Blah, blah. Are you kidding me? Are you that stupid? I'm not. Glory be to God. I'm not a forensic file, but I'm not stupid. I'm not kind of a lover. Glory. I got me a nice photo. Take it. And then I got a And I pass it on to the landlord. Hallelujah, God. I don't care if you saw gum, gum wrapper, 
a rock until the dove came to see it because the dove came and flew it in. He picked it up from somewhere. Huh? And he picked it up from somewhere in the snow. Huh? And he picked it up from somewhere in the snow and it's going to have some wet to it. And I see the wet on it and everything around it. Da, da, da. This ain't no Gideon miracle. Huh? I know not kidding. Da, 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 da. That dove better be touched by some dew. Huh? If it's a snow on the ground, huh? it better be touched by some dew or you will have your uh, dew in the uh, God comes uh, with a dangerous mind. Uh, but he let brothers in a secret place of the of the most high shall abide under the shadow. Hallelujah. I'm employing my megaphone this year. I told y'all that I'm pulling my megaphone. Cause that's what I got. That's my gift tens. I got art and I got megaphone. Now God gave me He gave me minimal. How about I said, God, you're going to give me a couple of things. He gave me minimal. How about God gave you minimal? Because he wants to see you make maximum out of it. How about God gave you minimal? He gave all of them extra. He gave them pretty and curly straight hair. How about I put my finger in my head wrong way. It's morning and it cut me back. How about my glory? And then I have. I put my thing in my head the wrong way here. On a certain day, I will put back enough. And I'm not playing. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I thank you for what you've given me to work with. I thank you that it's minimal. Because when you give me minimal, I say, I can say, okay, I got two things to work with. Rather than ten talents, I got two. If I got two, then I know I just need to touch both of them. In the day, in 24 hours, I need to touch both of them in the day. I was sweet on the dog bed if I have to. Because what that says is I will do anything that I have to do for God. Hallelujah. Sleep on the doggy bed and to get up refreshed about, rather than sleep in the bed that I can't call mine. About, I never high, about, that my mind, I wake up, my mind is twisted. About, oh, I can't do it. About, hallelujah. Oh, if they want the bed too, they can have it. Maybe they earned it. I don't know. Oh, but I know I want to be an actor. <laughs> I know I'm going to be ox. God, I said, Satan looks, uh, uh, I'm sorry, not Satan. Missy looks like an ox to me. She looks like an ox. She's short, she's stumpy. But that is not a bad thing. I'm stumpy too. But they're not like that. She, she's stumpy where she looks like all her, her strength is, is in her box in her middle. Like her torso. I said, she, oh, she's an ox. Samantha's a fox. You know the story behind that? Well, Grandma had Samantha on the bed, and Samantha could not have been more than three months old. She still had blue lips. I remember that. Don't ask me why her lips were blue. Got that? But she still had blue lips. And as Grandma changed her pamphlet, she looked at Samantha, she said, uh, Samantha looked like, she looked like dry meat that had been wet. Originally. And that's when I changed their mind. They went to meet and they said, okay, but we want to drive. Oh, okay. To the hair dryer to the meat. And then they made it fluffy. So it look like. And grandma prophetically spoke over. She picked her up and looked at her. She said, mm, Jamie's pretty. But Samantha's going to be a fox. I said, I'm six. You know, grandma's going to fight over Samantha all the time. She be talking about Samantha to her friends. And I hear say Samathis, and I will go off her name. It's not Samathis. Her name, because she my sister, is Samantha. I ain't talked to Samantha about five, six years now. <laughs> Glory be to God, because she ain't, she ain't, she ain't, she ain't all there. And it's a different not all there, right? It's, a, it's not, all, not all there that I can help. It's a not all there that hurts me when I don't help it. It's a low, it's not all there. When they say, well, if they're not all there, knowingly where they are and being okay, not being all there, but when they see you or they talk to you, they strike out at you. Not all there. <laughs> but at that time, I was six. And at that time, I felt like Grandma said, uh-uh, don't say my little sister name wrong. I had a problem with it. Right? Her name. When, I said, when Grandma said everybody named all the cousin names, she said them wrong. She said, King uh, Michael. So you can slow down on some names, Grandma, but the other ones you try to say fast. Is that what it is? What's going on? Like she's from North Carolina. And I, I said, but you can't, Grandma, you can give me your accent. You can try. You ain't even trying. You can give her to that. 
Bobo, the boy's name is Greenwood. I think she gave up one day and decided to call him Bobo. Um, <laughs> Tasha, Edward, oh, Grandma, stop it. Here we go. Chris, the girl's name is Crystal. Chris, Jane, where's my M? Can I get an M? Can I buy an M? I'd like to buy a vowel or something, Grandma. Give me something. Uh, they like, took my M and then replaced it with anything. She messed up everybody's name. Everybody's name. And it came down to Samantha. And said, Samantha, I think she wanted to make up a name for everybody. I didn't care about her. When Grandma passed away, I did not know it. She had a specific relationship with everybody. All the great grandkids, all the grandkids, to the point where we all thought to be specifically were her favorite. Right? I used to go to see Grandma every day. I'm disabled. So I'm going to go and I'm going to do something for somebody else. I'm just Jamie. That's what I do. I don't, try, I don't keep everything for myself. Right? So, I, so if I got something, I got time. Right? I mean, I have money, but if I got time, I'm going to spend that time if I can. If God said, okay, with you. So I should go. Eat lunch with Grandma every day. I'm a kid. I watched the view. I hated that show, but Grandma liked it, so I watched it with her and pretended that I was enjoying. Without me, when I was not enjoying either of you, not the view of Jacob Street in New Jersey, and not the view on her TV. I said, my eyes could not rest anywhere happily until I saw Grandma and I heard her say, Jamie. And he asked me now, because I, I value that. I value the, the times when Grandma look at me and say, Jane! If you asked me the last time the Grandma looked at me and said, Jane! I wouldn't be able to tell you. But I can tell you this. The last picture that I had in my church directory, right, is a big smile on my face, this wig on that's crazy, crazy looking, because my hair can't fit up underneath it, and I got a white dress on. Now, that picture was taken of me the day that I recorded I Am Blessed, which was the day that God let me know she's going to die. Eight months later, Grandma's dead. Oh, <laughs> We have a specific relationship, right? Each one of us uh, with grandma, right? Everybody thought they were grandma's favorite. And I never cared about how they were. And when grandma passed, uh, we had the best gift that we could get uh, from her. We each had an excellent, uh, above reproach uh, relationship. Except Lois. Grandma knew she was going to die. So grandma got a call uh, from Monday to Friday, called for Lois. Grandma didn't call for me because I saw Grandma every day, and Grandma knew we had an understanding. Grandma said that she said to everybody, she said, I don't care what everybody else is doing. Jamie does not talk because I didn't. I was scared when I was, when I was younger. I didn't talk to her. I go, talk in full senses to people outside until I was like seven years old. She said, Jamie doesn't have to say nothing to me, but we have an understanding. Grandma knew then about you and all you're getting. You may not get anything from this kid. You may not get money, but get a relationship, get understanding. And Grandma got that with me. Now here's the thing. Grandma called for a little list for five days straight. And when I say called for a little list, she's in a hospital bed. People are coming in and out and they know she's going to pass. Well, I knew she's going to pass and I was in Roseville, New Jersey. I had not seen Grandma in the bed. Because I didn't want that to be the last memory I had of my grandmother. The same grandma that walked miles and miles and miles and miles and miles of me just to go to the grocery store and get a bag of chips. I don't want this to be my memory. So she called for Lois for five days straight. Lois is her oldest child. You have my grandchildren, great grandchildren. Lois sparked that. Lois is right. She will be the the what is that the the matron? I don't know. And she called and called for Lois and said, and Lois kept sending the word back, I'm not coming, I don't want to talk to you. I'm not coming, I don't want to be around you. Right? And so grandma passed, right? She's in her casket and Lois sashayed into the church, right? Where they were having a few trolls, right? And I sashayed into the church like she had been grandma's best friend. Like, yeah, I'm not cut up about her. Like she had been calling you and calling for you. I don't care. You can't come there. You make a phone call. You pick up a quarter and call tell Oprah to say a name on TV or something like that, right? Because I know when everybody else cares, Oprah cares, apparently. Get up and go see her. But she didn't. And so the, 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 the 
rumor has it that grandma abused my mother. She would pull her hair too tight when she put it in pink tails. At least she's doing your hair. Those never did my hair. Not one day. But she said, the rumor has it that she's being abused by grandma. If that's the case, should I go there and she's calling for you. This is your time to go there and talk to her. And at the end of the day, get and earn all your getting, get an understanding, get what you have been waiting for this entire time. I'm telling you, if I got a problem with somebody or I got an issue with somebody, I want to talk about it. I want to resolve it. I don't want you to be on your death that dying and calling for me and because I'm too stubborn to come see about you, to come talk to you, to have anything to do with you, I let you die without me getting an understanding of why you did what I think you may have possibly done to me. It doesn't matter whether it was intentional or not. It doesn't have to be. It's a new year, right? but there's still people whose lives are ending, right? It's a new year, right? But the lives are, 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 are drying out and dying out. This is my new year, right? So are we in January 11th, 25th, something? I don't know. Are we some amount of days into the new year? Right? It just snowed on, on a Saturday. Thank you, Jesus. It just snowed on Saturday, and I got to see it. This is a new year, but for somebody's mama, for somebody's dad, for somebody's child, uh, the new year began with a stop for them. It it stopped. My new year signified your old life ending. How? How can we be on the same planet, in the same country, and I call this thing new, and yours... Your, your look, your perspective of it to appear to be old, right? That is, well, that, 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 I'm calling the same, if I'm calling this thing new and you are calling it old, then somebody is lying. Because truth, right, is the truth all the time. And I'm not kidding about that. I'm kidding about that. I have truth the way the truth and the light. Jesus is the way the truth and the light, right? So I know if I have Jesus, I'm going to see things differently, right? What everybody else sees as old, I'm going to call it new because it's always with Jesus a new beginning. It's always new mercy that I'm going to see. Hallelujah. You ain't got to like me. How about I? You can't stop me from seeing what God done it for my earth. See, you can't uh, put a devil on my earth. Jamie Extravaganza. Hallelujah. You can't stop me. Oh, oh, oh. Ha! You can't stop me. If anybody here got any common sense, they would develop the exact same attitude. That matter of fact, do this with me. I'm going to the bathroom right now. Look in the mirror. There's another hole in my ceiling. Don't worry about it. Hallelujah. Hey, lady with the crazy hair and a red tank top on. You can't stop me from singing what God has for me this year. Glory be to God. Oh, this is my year. I'm going to be an ox. Yes, Smith going to be that fox, but uh, I'm going to be. I said, Lindsay, actually, to me, because I'm an artist, I'm telling you, I don't see people for who um, they actually are. I see them for the animal that they look like to me, right? She looks like an ox. Smith looks like a fox because Smith is felt, right? It's not that Lizzie, her, 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 for me, her personality is ox-like. She, she does things on purpose and it's heavy and with her feet and does things on purpose. She try to be ox-like. She try to be. Stay with me. I know a lot of y'all are Lindsay fans. Don't, 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 don't turn me off yet. This is a twist. She tries to be ox-like. That's a, I don't even think she has to try. She don't want to. It's a beautiful thing. Because I think one day I woke up and said, oh yeah, Lindsay's an ox. I get it, Lindsay's an ox. And I started seeing all these pictures in the Bible of how oxen are uh, used, right? So uh, here we come, where I think about Elisha was the best picture of it. Uh, Elisha had them ox, uh, and those oxen carry Elisha. Uh, to his ministry, you better say this thing to me, Holy Spirit. Uh, if it had not been for those ox, 
person, uh, Elisha would not have had a ministry to speak of. Uh, what was it? Elisha of Shamrach? Wasn't it that? I don't know. But uh, check and let me know, right? Uh, Elisha, right? Uh, Elijah's person. Elijah walked up and put his cloak on Elisha's back uh, when Elisha of Shamrach uh, was pushing them up. And I, I said, I want to be one then. Because first, in the beginning of the week, is, oh, uh, oh, she's an ox. I get it. Because she stepped on hard and she oxy. Stay with me. By Wednesday, I was like, oh, she, she, she an ox. And I started thinking about Elisha, and I started thinking about the big, different stories where I had seen oxen, right? Joven. I mean, when you are looking for things of strength, when you're looking for stories in the Bible that talk about where somebody needs an animal of strength, blah, 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 even when Jesus talks about blah, blah, the unequally yoked, blah, blah, he's not referring to unequally yoked uh, donkeys. He's not referring to unequally yoked uh, pigs. He's not referring to unequally yoked uh, cows. Because here's the thing, if you do not yoke an oxen, right, uh, you will not be able to uh, contain that oxen. Uh, the oxen will stop you out. Because I could put a leash on a dog, but a dog can actually run without its leash. Uh, but if I, and it's not going to be a danger to me. But if I, I don't unlock my oxen just right, my oxen could kill me. I just walked in the kitchen this morning. God said, you have to yoke it. If you want it to perform for you. And I saw myself pushing. This ox that I called Lindsay. That I called Lindsay. I had an ox that was walking in the kitchen. I had an ox that was pushing it. And the, the, I was pushing it and the wheels were really tiny that were connected to it. The tiny wheels, but it had a yoke. He said, if you do not yoke it right. It not, will not perform for you. If you got an ox and you don't treat it right, so the, the ox may get upset about it. <laughs> and the only death that may happen in the house is you. You may die because you didn't do it right the first time. Uh, an ox will kill you. So first I was like, oh, she acts like it is. And then I was like, oh, she, she acts. And then by Friday I was like, oh, Jesus, she acts. Why can't I be ox? Why can't I have ox? I've been saying she oxy for a while. She, oh, she oxen. She oxing. She is oxing. Trying to calm myself down. Oh, she's just oxing. So I put my headphones on. She's a bump, kicking against the prick. She's oxing. She's being what naturally comes to her. I've been there, I've been standing for a while until I sat back. I said, wait a minute. She ox? I said, I got Nehemiah 8. 8.10, I got, I got Nehemiah 8.10. It says, the joy of the Lord is my strength, don't it? It says, joy of the Lord is my strength. My gift is joy. So I got the gift of joy, right? We know it, right? I got a gift of joy, right? I can find myself in the hard, most horrible situations, uh, and you will not, you won't see a sad face on me. Huh? I'm buying a doggy bed to sleep on. When I got a queen size bed for the first time, I got a bed that I can fit on. I got a queen size bed in the room huh, that I won't be able to sleep on. I can't sleep on, huh? right? Because of the fact that huh, blah, blah, this thing is chasing me out of my room every night. Huh? I said I need to get some sleep, huh? and so if I want to get the sleep huh, and comfort, huh, blah, blah, I, I, I'm not going to be sophisticated. Blah, 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 blah. What is your your desire? Do you want to sleep or do you want to sophisticate? Hey, come on, my glory, mama. Do I want to get sleep? Do I want to get rest or do I want to reach right? So, mama, can I be high? For myself, or do I want to be seen? Hallelujah. Or do I want to sleep? Do I want to rest? Do I want to find shelter? Am I in a time of trouble? I'm getting me a doggy bed that um, is fit for a dog that deals with anxiety. Cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna dog this thing, I'm gonna dog it out right there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a doberman and then I may be a pit per, squeak you, what, what? What do you don't talk about? Right now, but I'm gonna go into a full blown doberman. I'm gonna, 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 I'm gon
got a light, say Christmas lights, but I keep them up all year round. And the white lights, I like a white lights up in my window. I got two windows, not just one. Hallelujah. I got carpet. Oh God, I got a fan. And I got a heater. I am rich. I got the blessings of the Lord that make me rich. Maybe you got too much riches. You're asking God to teach you how it is to suffer. Maybe you are dealing with too many riches. And God has to remove you from that place. I had to sleep on the floor last night in the kitchen. I too sing America. <laughs> I'm the darker brother. They said me to eat to in the kitchen when company comes. But I laugh and eat well and grow strong. Tomorrow, I'll sit at the table when company comes. Nobody will dare say to me eat in the kitchen. Then, besides, they'll see how beautiful I am and be ashamed because I too am America. Thank you, Lance Hughes. <laughs> I didn't write that. Thank you, Lance Hughes. Those made me memorize it, but I did not write that. And the more I live in Maryland, the more I live uh, around people like this, and I come to see that nothing is mine, right? Even if I pay for it, nothing belongs completely to me, right? Because even though I may pay for the rent and the rent to stay here, check this out. If she takes away the ability for me to stay here, then it doesn't matter how much money I got in my pocket to pay the rent check. If I can, I'm not kidding about that. She can still take away the ability to live here. Do you get it? I can have all the money in the world, but if I'm playing with things that do do not belong to me. You better get some courtesy. I'm, I'm, I'm learning that thing about hallelujah. I'm, I'm learning it because I'm still the darker brother. See, in Jersey, I grew up with Samantha and Tasha. And both Samantha and Tasha are darker than me. Samantha's like a, a dark caramel. She's like a charmel. <laughs> and Tasha, she like dark chocolate. If she smell at night, she would like touch cat. Oh, it's over that. She don't like that. So you see, you don't say that. In Jersey, they were the darker brother. So I do sing America. I'm the darker brother. They send me to eat the kitchen company. Come. Obviously, if he's the darker brother, then their lighter brothers is, is outside eating with the family. You know that. A slave story with Uncle Tom. You get that, right? So uh, here we go. The lighter brother is outside, obviously, when the darker brother is in the kitchen. That's why he's classified as the darker brother. So the brother. But the classification is darker, and that's what affords him to not eat at the table when company comes, but to eat in the kitchen. To sleep in the kitchen. Here, it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what people do around me. I'm still seen as the darker brother. <laughs> I'm the lighter one in New Jersey, but here I'm the darker one. Because everybody else seems to be Caucasian. On occasion, Caucasian. So if they're Caucasian, right, people that are not even Caucasian will look at them and defend them. Because we don't care, Jamie, you are still the darker brother. So the best thing for me to do is to find a way to, if I got to go to the kitchen, to enjoy sleeping in it. Rather than crying about it, because crying won't get me anywhere. People don't care if you cry, especially if you are the darker brother. They can see the tears as they stroll down your face, as the tears stroll, that they stroll down my face. You can't see it because I'm still the darker brother. And the same kitchen that Tasha had, never had to eat in when I was in New Jersey, the same kitchen I've got to eat in now that I'm in now. I said, she asks? Yes, she asks. That's the way. She asks Jesus. Everybody always get the great animal, Jesus. No one gonna get something great. She's not a great animal. She's an ox. Oxes are uh, animals of strength. And I said, the story, as I was talking to the Holy Spirit, um, um, right before I turned this thing on, I said, the story with Elisha's animals, Elisha's oxen, is not a great one, Holy Spirit, because of the fact that uh, he had to, right? He didn't have to, but he did. He cut up his ox and, and he served it to those around him. He served that animal. I don't want to cut her up. And if I cut her up, I don't want to eat her. That's cannibalism. See, 
just go to take me out of my element. So she does things to take me out of my art, take me out of my life. Because she's been in this apartment. I gave her food. I gave her some stuff. I gave her uh, the has stuff for her daughter. I, she's been inside this apartment many times. Kurt complained because every time he called to do our appointment, she would knock on the door. Every single time. It's like she timed it. She would knock on the door. And I said, Kirk, I got to go because I got to help her. I got to go. I got to talk her through. I got to go. I got to take what Miss Linda's teaching me and give it to her. I got to go. Because I was trying to win a soul. The very same soul that was taking aim at me. She asked to come in after she destroyed the ceiling the first time. She asked to come in and see my bathroom. Because she wanted to look up in the ceiling and see exactly what everything looked like. <laughs> She's making plans. Very smart. Very, very smart. That's why she split it up under the back door and not the front one. She split stuff up under the back door and not the front one. I'm from Jersey. I'm from the ghetto. You don't slide nothing under my door. You not. You don't slide nothing. You not sliding. You not. That caused me to kill arts, right? Because if I wake up and I see, I, I'm dealing with PTSD. If I wake up, I see this thing that slid up beneath my door. When you chase me into my kitchen to sleep on the floor, I cannot sleep in my own bedroom and sleep on the floor. And I wake up and I see you slide something under the very door that I have to sleep on, or under the very door for the very room that I have to sleep on now because you will not let me sleep in my room. You're upstairs and you won't let me get any rest. She comes up to my boobs. I said, I, I'm not afraid of her. I'm afraid of her. I don't go to my apartment. I deal with agoraphobia, but I deal with it. I don't go out of my apartment. Not because I'm scared of her. I'm scared of what I would do to her if I see her. What I'm saying is I'm, I'm nervous because it's, I want to keep God first. And right now I think it's got some semblance of Jesus in, in, in the, this person's mind. If I leave and this person spits in my face again, or this person kicks at me again, or this person does the, 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 that shuffling thing where she showed me, oh, this is how I stop in front of you. Oh, what you gonna do? Like, 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 that happens again. I don't know what I might do. I ran around her and ran up the stairs when she did it the first time. 